one. We're going to be picking up the unearned revenue of the 450. That brings it back down to zero. So all we did here, we did an adjusting entry to increase the accounts receivable for those negative deposits that we had in place. And then, and then we reversed it, getting us back to the starting point. We put those into the unearned revenue for presentation purposes and then simply reversed it back out. No impact in either the adjusting or reversing entries to net income items, that being different than the book type of problem where you would see unearned revenue continually increasing. And then, and then the problem there with your adjustment would trying to be determine how much of the unearned revenue had been earned, which would mean you would decrease the unearned revenue and record the sales. That's not, and then you would not have a reversing entry in that case. That would be a permanent difference, a permanent change. And what, in our problem that we had here with the adjusting process, then it's a, it, it, we're going to reverse it out. So we get back to what the accounting department's going to do because their problem isn't recognizing the revenue. Their problem is tying out the prepayment to the invoice, which is going to record the revenue at us at the future point in time. Now, I'm not going to record these to the general ledger because I'm going to keep the general ledger at basically the year end, the 228 information. But obviously in, in the software, you could then record the added detail to, to the general ledger. And then you would have to be careful on the sub ledger as of 3 1. Remember that the sub ledger, now, if I go all the way back to the sub ledger, and that's going to be way to the right. We basically did a reversing entry. And again, we didn't put the reversing entry. I wouldn't apply it to these actual customers. If the software forced me to use the sub ledger, then I'm thinking I'm going to put it over here into this, into the adjusted customer. I'm not going to put it in this place at this point because I'm going to keep our GL and the sub ledgers as of the cutoff date, uh, time frame. So that's going to add up to the 23,151 at this point in time on the sub ledger. That should tie out to the trial balance of the 23,151 for the year to date. And then we changed it or, or brought it back uh, down for the reversing entries as of 3-1. So this is where we stand at this point in time. So this column, of course, being our year to date, this being the reversing entries after the first day of the following time period. And so they're the same down, well, we have the balance sheet accounts down to here and then the income statement accounts here for the two for the two month time frame and then we rolled out the income statement up to here you will recall and so when we're talking about the entries or the reversing entries that happened for in in march after the cutoff then we're looking at the income statement only for the month of march here there was no impact on the income statement however from this particular reversing or adjusting entry.